fucked her, no condom, now your dick get itching Yo, First name Ben, last name Dover Shotty come through and I tell her bend over, yeah I got a switch, no controller I'm finna lay pipe when she's over I'm only get drunk when I'm sober Yeah, yeah, yeah Comics have been around for quite some time now, a very long time in fact. While it's hard to pin down the very first comic as the topic is highly contentious due to the differences between a comic book and a comic strip, the medium has been around since the middle ages in places like France, the US and the UK. The first American style comic book is widely regarded to be famous for its A Carnival of Comics which was released in the US in 1934 and was a reprint bundle of famous comic strips with many storytelling elements. Comic books would then go on to consist of several types of genre and narratives outside humor. But let's talk about the actual subject of this video, which is the comic books we know and love today, starting with their history. In February 1935, DC Comics' precursor, National Allied Publications, published New Form No. 1, the first American comic book with all original 40 anthologies rather than comic strip reprints. In 1937, Detective Comics, the anthology of individual comics, was officially formed with the first issue, Detective Comics No. 1, by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. It introduced Detective Comics' first ever character, Slam Bradley, a tough private eye detective. A year later, Siegel and Schuster would go on to create Action Comics, which is the first issue famously known to feature Superman, the Man of Steel. Less than a year later, Batman the Cape Crusader was introduced in the 27th issue of Detective Comics. Then, in October 1939, DC's major competitor and Marvel Comics' precursor, Timely Publications, created by Martin Goodman, released Marvel Comics No. 1. The comic featured the first appearance of the Human Torch, Angel, and Prince Namor, the Submariner. Both companies later released characters like Captain America and Wonder Woman the following year. In 1961, Timely rebranded as Marvel, and in 1977, National Comics officially rebranded as DC Comics, and the rest, as they say, is history. Several types of comics by several publishers and companies have been released since then, but there are two specific comic book series I'd like to highlight in this video, and they both have nothing to do with either Marvel or DC. The first is Gareth Ennis's and Derek Robertson's The Boys, and the second is Robert Kirkman's Invincible. The Boys was first published in October 2006 in the DC Comics imprint Wildstorm. It ran for six issues before the publisher cancelled it because of its anti-superhero tour. It was then picked up by Dynamite Entertainment, where it ran and concluded in November 2012. The comic takes place in a world where superheroes exist but with a more realistic depiction as most of them are shallow and cruel. It followed The Boys, a misfit covert CIA group led by Billy Butcher along with the characters Mother's Milk, The Frenchman, the female and the newest member, Yui Kambo. The group is taxed with monitoring the superhero community, resulting in some bizarre, gory and messed up events. While not as wildly famous as it is now, the comic was decently critical and commercially successful and spawned several adaptations, and overall the comic had a simple start, though rough, and a definite conclusion. Invincible, on the other hand, was a monthly superhero comic book series published by Skybound Entertainment as part of Image Comics. The series ran for a whopping 15 years from January 2003 to February 2018 with 144 issues. Like The Boys, the series is set in a world where superheroes exist, but unlike The Boys, the comic follows modest, regular high school 17-year-old Mark Grayson, the son of Omniman, a man of the Viltrum alien race regarded as the strongest superhero on Earth. Mark eventually starts to see signs of his powers forming and then decides to follow his his father's footsteps and becomes the superhero Invincible. The comic sees him carry on several heroic deeds and fights various foes. However, without spoiling too much, the comic takes a drastic and surprising turn when more details are revealed about Mark's dad, the Viltrum race, and the true motives behind the hero's actions. Like the boys and many of Robert Kirksman's other works, Invincible had a long but well-structured run and a conclusion that was reasonable and some might even say satisfying. But oh boy, I wish you could say the same for everything else in this medium, because these two comics will be the tools I will use to show that comic books today actually suck. You see, while the comics I highlighted earlier in this video had modest beginnings before eventually blowing up in mass popularity, they obviously didn't start out that way. Today, the aforementioned heroes like Batman, Captain America, the Human Torch, Angel, and the Submariner may have started out with ground stories and backgrounds, but now they are death-defying entities, gods, or something else entirely. The advent of alternate universes has allowed competing companies to branch out creatively by producing several types of characters and overarching stories with alternate timelines across several genres. However, it's also made things fucking confusing. Not only do named characters have an almost infinite amount of universe variants, several of whom have been killed and revived 
multiple times, but new characters are also occasionally introduced along with side stories, alternate versions, additional versions, joke characters that are still canon, characters that aren't, and like so much more. But in case for some reason you don't believe me, let me give you some examples. Remember when I said several Marvel and DC characters have died and returned? Well, it's actually happened a lot more than you think. Like remember when Iron Man snaps his fingers with the Infinity Gauntlet at the end of Endgame and then dies? Well actually the events of the Infinity War in the comics play out a lot differently and it isn't the first or the last time the character has died. In the comics, Iron Man actually dies by getting his head ripped off by Terexia, who's sort of like the female Thanos. But of course that didn't last long as he eventually was resurrected by Silver Surfer and Adam Warlock. This event is not to be confused with when he's killed and ripped apart by Thanos in a different comic show in a different universe where Thanos won the war or when he's killed in the crossing storyline where he's a traitor to the Avengers but is then replaced by a younger Tony Stark from another universe but is then eventually fused with the original revived Tony Stark. This also isn't to be confused with when he's in a coma and is temporarily replaced with Ironheart. Ironheart, not to be confused with War Machine or James Rhodes who also was Stark suit several times before eventually going solo and not to be confused with the Iron Legion which is a bunch of other Iron Men. It's basically a clusterfuck is what I'm saying. Of course DC isn't innocent in all this bullshit too as their clusterfuck is just as convoluted if not more so. Take the Cape Crusader for example, Batman has died several times in his existence. Two relevant examples would be in Final Crisis Volume 16 and in the comic Batman R.I.P. In both scenarios he's dead before and during the Blackest Night storyline which has several members of the Justice League dead and revived to be Black Lanterns. But this Batman of course isn't to be confused with the Batman who laughs, a storyline that has infected Joker Batman who after snapping Joker's neck goes on a killing spree with his Joker diseased infused Robins. But this also isn't to be confused with the killing joke, one of my personal favorite comic stories that show the possible origin of Joker and a nice moment between the two foes. However, this also isn't to be confused with Batman Arkham Knight, the game that sees Batman haunted by visions and voices of Joker after he dies in the previous game Arkham City. Basically it's all a shit show is what I'm saying. My point is that these comic series are teeming with so many inconsistency, alternate realities and alternate variety that will leave even the most brilliant rocket scientist looking like a village idiot when trying to contextualize everything. Oh and speaking of alternate varieties, we have the aforementioned DC's Black Lanterns, Bizarro Justice League, Vampire Nightwing, Green Lantern Batman, Blur, F Blur Flash, Stanley's Aquaman and much much more. There's also the alternate versions of Spider-Man including the original Spider-Man, the ultimate Spider-Man, Miles Morales who's just a different Spider-Man and is technically part of the larger multiverse of Spider-Man which includes a teenage girl, a spider pig, Spider-Man Noir, love him, and yes, more. How many more spider people are there? Same as the Comic-Con. What's Comic-Con? Let's go! <laughs> Okay now let's say you don't give a damn about all of this and you just want to consume the simple stuff. Well, you could probably delve into the side stories, one shot and anthologies. One of the most famous and interesting examples from DC includes Superman Red Sun, a story that has Superman originally land in Russia instead of America. There's also the Arkham Asylum storyline, a story where Deadpool gets stuck in an old issue of Spider-Man, Hawkeye's dog gets one too because so why not, a manga style about Mary Jane and Spider-Man, just to name a few. So basically, even the seemingly simple standalone stories are more complicated than they seem and not only do you need to know some information about character backgrounds and circumstances but also what the fuck is going on. What's worse is that it's almost common in these comics for some stories to get retconned and thrown away, making the progress you've made and investment in some of these stories rendered useless. But wait, there's more, because just in case you thought you were starting to understand it all, and you're fucking lying by the way I don't believe you, you don't because for some god defined reason, these companies have decided multiple times to relaunch and reset several major character stories and their backgrounds, sometimes with many changes because why the fuck not. DC has the infamously famous relaunch New 52, the Confused and Rebirth, New Justice, the Infinite Frontier and the Dawn of DC which is this year's fresh relaunch. Then we have Marvel's Ultimate Marvel, All New All Different Marvel, Marvel Now, Marvel Legacy and the latest Fresh Start relaunch. So whichever comic you follow, just know you ain't escaping this shit. Oh not but we're not yet. done yet cause we also have the infinite number of media spin-offs like TV series, games, movies or whatever because every single character needs to be milked. 
we have shows like Teen Titans, not to be confused with Teen Titans Go or Titans, the newly cancelled live action show. Then there is the animated series Batman Brave and the Bold, not to be confused with Batman, the animated series of or Batman Beyond, the other animated series. There is also Pennyworth, a live action series following a young Alfred, not to be confused with Gotham, that's also a live action series that follows a younger Alfred and Bruce Wayne. We also have Marvel's The Amazing Spider-Man, the 1977 series, not the movie, that follows university student Peter Parker, not to be confused with the other Spider-Man movies, this one, not that one. All the high school Peter Parker in Spectacular Spider-Man. Spectacular Spider-Man, not Ultimate Spider-Man. The animated series, not the comic. If you're confused, don't worry about it because I'm convinced you aren't meant to understand all this shit. We also can't forget the games like Spider-Man, uh, pick one, pick any, I don't care. Or the Arkham series, Injustice, Gotham Knight, or the upcoming Wolverine or Suicide Squad. The game, not the movie. That one, not this one. Oh, and are all of these games kinda? I don't know, maybe, who knows, who cares? I'm losing my fucking mind bro, I swear to god. Oh, and have I mentioned a crossover? Because there's a crossover, it's a mini series called Marvel vs DC. It was short lived, it was confusing, it was cool, it's never coming back. All these media just prove how bloated and incomprehensible the industry can be and why I think following the movies along with the comics doesn't help and will only confuse you. But at least if you're only following the movies, you won't have to worry about the clusterfuck that is the continuity of the comics. This all unfortunately stems from the company's unwillingness to move on from super popular heroes and take risks because old fans will always consume content about their favorite heroes due to nostalgia and new fans will consume it because that's what's new and popular. And notice how I said heroes not characters because while characters are periodically introduced many of them are replacements for signature heroes or created as alternate versions like Ironheart and Miles Morales. Okay now let's take a step back and go back to the two comics I highlighted at the start of the video. While these comics pale in comparison to others in terms of popularity and success, what the boys and Invincible have shown over them is their simplicity not only in their stories but in their structure. Both comics start off simply by contextualizing the world, introducing the characters and then raising stakes through cool, crazy events, ending in a straightforward way and not making things bloated despite all their elements. The comics do a great job of exciting fans by going balls to the walls with their craziness and absurdity and feature a story that isn't afraid to take risks and one that rewards fans for sticking true to the end. The only complexity lies with the several adaptations and their differences, many of which are significant and easily noticeable. Also fun fact, one of my favorite British actors Simon Pegg has some kind of relation to these two comics. In the film Paul, Simon Pegg can be seen wearing an invincible shirt and the issues of the comic appear in the comic book shop so he's probably a big fan of Kirkman's works. And in The Boys he has an even stronger influence as the actor was the model Huey was based on for the way he looked in the comics and I don't know I think it's pretty cool. But all that said it's also only fair to note that these comics are much shorter than the whole run of most major Marvel and DC heroes which is probably why they're so simple or at least end up that way. Either way, while comics have really evolved in almost every way creatively and is still a fantastic medium for storytelling and narrative experimentation, unfortunately the bigger comics have become too bloated to appreciate sometimes. And in cases where it feels like you can't, everything will probably be reset again down the line, so why even bother? Thankfully, we still have lots of comic books featuring stories of all types that are at least simple enough to follow and thank god for that because I would have gone mad if I still had to read all this bullshit. Hey you, thanks a lot for watching this video, especially up to this point. If you enjoyed the video, press a like, subscribe and comment what I did right. If you didn't, subscribe anyway and comment what I did wrong. Till the next one.